West African superstar Didier Drogba has led his football mad country to two World Cups. With a 2010 competition on the horizon, the Chelsea striker once again carries the hopes of a nation. Didier Yves Drogba Tabili is known as one of the best strikers of his generation. Captain and all-time top scorer for Côte de Lavoie, Didier is playing the best football of his career, but it hasn't been the easiest of rides. He grew up in the multicultural metropolis of Abdijan, the nation's largest city. It boasts more than five million residents in the metropolitan area alone. Of all the languages spoken there, French is the most common. Densely populated and ravaged by civil unrest and corruption, Didier faced the kind of childhood challenges that few of us face in a lifetime. At the time, Abdijan was enjoying an economic boom and huge growth, thanks to the pro-Western policies of the Hufei Bojni government. Although this prosperity brought modernization to parts of the city, other areas of Abdijan have been in decline since the 1980s. At the age of five, Didier was sent to France to live with his professional football playing uncle, Michael Gobber. But after becoming homesick, he was sent home three years later. He was destined to return to France again shortly after, when both his mother and father lost their jobs. His parents later joined him there, and in 1993, they settled in the Paris suburb of Antony. He played with youth club Lavalios before joining the League Two club Le Mans at the age of 18. After a slow start, he finally made it into the first team. However, a poor second season led to his transfer. He was snapped up by Gwingap, where in his second year, he scored 17 goals in 34 games. This performance caught the eye of League One club Marseille. Didier Drogba was transferred to Marseille in the summer of 2003. He joined the Mediterranean city at the perfect time, with the formerly dominant club looking to reclaim their rightful spot at the top of League One. Didier thrived under the pressure. In his first and only season with the French club, he scored 32 goals, including 11 goals in Europe. Thanks to his golden strikes, Marseille qualified for the UEFA Cup final. But sadly, a hip injury had put him in doubt for the clash. Ça va très bien. Uh, Drogba will be playing. It's taken us a while to get him on his feet. I hope his presence will give us the opportunity to win. Even with Didier in the game, rivals Valencia would be tough to beat. With their 14 match unbeaten streak, they were the clear favourites. Although Marseille had their chances to take the lead, it was Valencia who scored first after a match-altering penalty, which saw the French club's goalkeeper sent off. With Marseille one man down, Valencia dominated the second half and won the UEFA Cup 2-0. Despite losing the UEFA Cup, Didier's stellar season in League One caught the eye of Russian billionaire and Chelsea owner Roman Abramovich. The offer of around 26 million euros for the young striker was hard for Marseille to refuse. And although Didier would leave France with a heavy heart, all parties agreed to the deal. After only one year in top tier football, he crossed the channel and set about repeating his League One form in one of the most prestigious football competitions around the globe, the English Premier League. We're happy with what we've, we've paid. And as I say, I think uh, if you talk about anybody in European football today, uh, Didier is one of the most exciting strikers around and, and uh, we're delighted to have him joining, joining uh, Chelsea. The Chelsea's management had a lot of faith in the almost unknown African. Well, I think his, uh, I think his record speaks for himself. Another competition that was uh, around looking at him um, and, I, and I, along with everybody else, feel confident that the money we've spent on him will be uh, repaid back uh, in doing what he does best, and that's scoring goals. His arrival at Stamford Bridge came just one month after the signing of new manager Jose Mourinho. 
the new Chelsea manager had to determine whether his highly paid footballers were doing enough to earn their paychecks. If this player helps us uh, to get what Chelsea is fighting for many years, if we become champion or European champion or we win an English Cup, all is beautiful. If we do something great and he help us to arrive there, I think it's cheap. If uh, we pay such amount of money and we arrive in the end of the season and he doesn't give a contribution for an important thing, I think so. I think he's, he becomes expensive. We have to wait. But again, in the history, you go to the history and you will find a lot of five, six, seven million pounds players really expensive because they play nothing. After scoring in his third game for the Blues, his debut season was brought to a grinding halt when he pulled a stomach muscle in a clash against Liverpool. The muscle strain was serious enough to keep him out of action for over two months. Injuries had been a regular concern in Didier's career thus far, and with Chelsea hitting their stride, he was keen to regain full fitness. But on returning to the side, he struggled to find the kind of form he'd brought to Marseille. And although he did enough to keep himself in the team, there was no doubt he wasn't playing to his potential. Because, you know, I'm not uh, in 100% in this season. Uh, I've never been in 100%, but... Uh, uh, but I, I know that... If I'm in 70%, I will do, I will give 100% of 70%. So I think uh, two days ago I, I've done it, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy. Yeah. Despite Didier's lackluster playing, Chelsea continued to thrive under the management of Mourinho and hit a dream run of consecutive wins. I think that they look very strong. They look uh, almost uncatchable, but uh, we all know that the Premiership is a very long uh, championship and uh, anything can happen, especially when it comes to December. And uh, you know, uh, There's going to be a point during the season when some of the best players, some of the best clubs are going to have like a... They're going to slow down because they're playing so many competitions. But definitely Chelsea look very impressive because you would expect them to start a bit slower considering that they won last season. But they've started to see if there's, uh, there's still a, a, a point to prove and they've been great. So, so far it's going to, you know, for what we've seen so far, it's going to be difficult for Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal and, uh, and Tottenham to, to keep up with them. Chelsea's great form helped them claim their second league title in the club's history, finishing four games clear of second-placed Arsenal in a season where they lost just one EPL game. Didier finished his injury-interrupted season with 16 goals from 40 games, including a goal in the League Cup final. The seasons that followed saw Chelsea win more titles. They claimed the league title again in 2005-2006, the FA Community Shield in 2005, and the coveted FA Cup in 2006-2007. After enduring two mediocre seasons, Didier hit form in the 2006-2007 season, scoring 33 goals across all competitions, exceeding his tally of the previous two seasons combined. The 2007-2008 season saw the departure of Jose Mourinho, which reportedly left Didier in tears. His obvious distress led to speculation that he would soon follow suit. However, he later confirmed that he would be staying on at Stamford Bridge. And in a season he would no doubt like to forget, he was once again sidelined by injury. This time, he twisted his knee on the training track and missed four weeks. The knee injury caused him more trouble in 2008-2009 as he struggled to regain fitness and missed games from August through to November. This absence saw him lose favour with new manager Scolari. However, after Scolari's sacking in early 2009 and the temporary appointment of Hus Hinnink, Didier found himself back in the side. But it certainly wasn't to be his season. It all ended badly when Didier confronted and abused referee Tom Henning over a bow after the whistle of Chelsea's UEFA Champions League semi-final loss to Barcelona. Didier has apologised for his overreaction on television, which was not good. And uh, we talked about that and he apologised for that. 
I think apologizing is uh, openly is I think a big step forward to that, and uh, I think we have we have to go on. For that well-publicised display of bad behaviour, Drogba received a four-game European ban, which was later reduced to three games after Chelsea lodged an appeal. On returning from the ban, Didier looked to be back to his best, scoring regularly in the first half of the 2009-2010 season and nailing 14 goals from just 16 appearances. With both Chelsea and Didier finding form, the future looks bright at Stamford Bridge. As long as the West African striker can stay injury free, his best football years are yet to come. Playing in his sixth season with the Blues, Didier has had the best start to a season so far in his career and is on track to beat his 2006-2007 record of 33 goals. Nicknamed the Elephants, the Côte de Lavoie national football team has had little to celebrate. Up until 2005, their greatest achievement was winning the 92 African Cup of Nations, in which they beat Ghana in a record-breaking penalty shootout. After a nil-all draw, Côte de Lavoie finally beat Ghana 11-10 in a 24-shot shootout. Didier received his first international cap in 2002 in a game against South Africa. A year later, he scored his first goal for the Elephants against Cameroon in a 3-0 victory. But there's no doubt that helping them qualify for the 2006 FIFA World Cup for the first time ever was his proudest moment. It's a very powerful moment, a very powerful moment in my career, and I think for everyone here. Because the World Cup is something special. Tomorrow I will be even more proud than now. I've had such a fast and amazing career. It's like a gift. In just four years, I came from Le Mans to the English Championship and now to the World Cup competition. I think that I can be proud of that. It will certainly give me lots of memories. Almost overnight, Drogba became a national hero. World Cup fever swept the Ivory Coast and many fans attributed their success solely to Didier. And with good reason. His nine goals from their eight qualifying matches was one of the greatest returns in World Cup qualifiers. The fans couldn't get enough of him. In Ivory Coast, we are lucky. We have Drogba, Aruna and others. They play in Europe and we have a good chance of making it, so I'm not worried. Despite Olivier's optimism, the Elephants found themselves in Group C, aka the Group of Death. Facing an uphill battle before they even got off the plane, Côte de Lavoie played admirably in their World Cup matches. They lost 2-1 to the much-fancied Argentina and Netherlands and won their last game 3-2 against Serbia and Montenegro a gallant effort for any country playing in their first World Cup. With the 2010 World Cup coming up fast, Côte de Lavoie fans once again went into a football frenzy. However, in March 2009, their over-exuberant support turned to tragedy. With around 50,000 fans packing the stands of the Hufe Bonny Stadium, a stampede broke out after tear gas was fired into the crowd by police. What happened on March 29th is a national tragedy. We are here now to pay our respects, and particularly so that people don't forget what happened. With outdated stadiums and poor safety regulations, stampedes and riots are a common occurrence in Africa. However, the fanatical support of football in African nations like Cote d'Ivoire clearly lives on. So passionate are the fans that no past troubles can eclipse the thrill of a national team win, although Didier hopes never to see a repeat of the 2009 tragedy. I think that everybody has responded very well. It was a difficult match, and the public must be good for a time. After Didier led his country to their first World Cup, he was rewarded with the captaincy. The Cote de Lavoie's best player was now the team's leader and ambassador. 
If this created extra pressure for the striker, he didn't let it show, as he led them to the African Cup of Nations final in 2006, where they eventually lost to Egypt 4-2 on penalties. Two years later, they looked to be in top form when they thrashed Guinea 5-0 in the quarterfinals. However, they lost to Egypt in the semis and eventually finished fourth. Despite the disappointing result, they could be excused for having other, more important tournaments on their mind. In the qualifiers for the 2010 FIFA World Cup, Côte de Lavoire topped their group in the first stage of the contest without losing a game. In the final stage, they continued their run of good form, winning five games and drawing one to qualify for their second World Cup in as many tournaments. This time, they would have the chance to compete on their own continent. It would have been unforgivable not to be going to South Africa for the first World Cup on our continent. It was our objective, and the objective has been achieved. Now we have to go and defend our colours better than we did in Germany. With one World Cup under their belt, the Ivory Coast will go to South Africa with high expectations and lots of confidence. Last time round, they were competitive against some of the world's greatest footballing countries. With Didier Drogba back at his best and the support of a nation behind them, no one can predict just how far Côte de Lavoie will go. In recent years, Didier Drogba's on-field rants have portrayed a rather unflattering side to an otherwise gentle persona. Off the field, away from the heat of battle, Didier is known as a gentle family man. He and his wife Ala have three children. The eldest Isaac was born in France in 1999. Since being appointed by the UNDP as a goodwill ambassador in 2007, Didier has been heavily involved in charity, particularly in Africa. In 2009, he announced that he would be donating over 3 million euros towards the construction of a hospital in Abdijan. He'd earned the money from his contract to endorse the wares of soft drink giant Pepsi. His generosity inspired Chelsea to announce that they too would donate their signing fee towards the project. The hospital was the first project in the newly formed Didier Drogba Foundation. His work for good causes, coupled with his sublime football skills, have made him a living legend in his home country. Whenever Didier returns, he is always given a hero's welcome and he never takes it for granted. What you have just done today what you have been doing for years, for me, for the players. It's huge. It's huge and it's fantastic. Because of you, I find the strength every day on the field to give you the best of myself. The Didier Drogba Foundation, along with his role as Goodwill Ambassador for the United Nations Development Program, will give Didier the opportunity to keep giving back to his fans for years to come. In 2008, he joined the ranks of many of his peers and became the subject of a book entitled Didier Drogba, Portrait of a Hero. The biography written by John McShane reveals the Chelsea striker's early struggles, his constant battle for acceptance and the truth about his rivalry with fellow Chelsea player Shevchenko. Portrait of a Hero is a testament to the success of a footballer who didn't get a proper start in the game until he was a teenager. Didier Drogba has come a long way from the crowded streets of Abdijan. Now playing for one of the best sides in Europe, he earns around 5.8 million euros from football and his endorsements. His paycheck from Chelsea puts him high up in the list of football's top earners. With a contract worth 4.8 million euros, he's not too far behind teammate Frank Lampard. Throughout his career, Didier Drogba has played alongside and been inspired by some brilliant footballers. Whether playing for his national side or Chelsea, Didier Drogba doesn't have to look too far for inspiration. Fellow countryman Bakari Kone is an exciting striker who plays for French League One side Marseille and was named Ivorian Player of the Year in 2009. After making his way up the ranks in Côte de Lavoie, he moved to France in 2003, where he was picked up by FC Lorient. 
He moved to Nice in 2005 and was transferred to Marseille in 2008. Salomon Kalou is another Ivorian player who plays alongside Didier at Chelsea. His speed enables him to play either on the wing or up front. To have Gian Terry and Didier on the pitch give more, you know, give more power to Chelsea and give more confidence to all the team to, to attack a, a great final. After spending some time in the Netherlands, Kalou transferred to Chelsea in 2006. Since then, he has scored 20 goals from 98 games. Chelsea teammate Florent Malouda was born in French Guiana on June 13, 1980. Joining Chelsea in 2007, Malouda wasn't shy about talking up his new club. Uh, I think all the team is confident and we'll, we'll try to prove it on the pitch. Playing predominantly on the left wing, Malouda was a part of Chelsea's successful FA Cup side in 2008-2009. Former Chelsea manager Jose Mourinho had an enormous effect on Didier when he joined the Blues in 2004. Understanding the pressures of moving to a new club and country, Mourinho played a large role in helping him settle into his new environment. When it was announced that Jose would be leaving Chelsea in 2007, Didier took it badly and reportedly told France Football magazine that he wanted to leave Chelsea. He ended up changing his mind and many believed it was Mourinho who talked him out of going. Didier Drogba and other African stars like Frederic Canute and Samuel Eto'o are all finding form at the right time. Not only does this put them in contention for annual awards, it also sets them up for World Cup honours. All those strikers are doing well. They have settled into their teams and players like Drogba, Canute and Samuel are really feeling confident. You see that. It's been a good year for all of them. Winning awards is nothing new to Didier Drogba. In 2006, he was named the African Footballer of the Year for his efforts in the World Cup and the African Cup of Nations. After narrowly missing out on the award in 2005, he turned the tables in 2006 and beat Samuel Eto'o by three points. He became the first player from Côte de Lavoire to win the award. Until today, we didn't have any player from Ivory Coast who has won this African Golden Trophy for football. It's a good thing that Drogba has this trophy today. It's a good thing for Ivory Coast. Over the course of his career, Didier Drogba has claimed numerous personal honours that place him in elite company. He's a two-time winner of the Ivorian Footballer of the Year, as well as the Ivory Coast's all-time top scorer. Remarkably, he won the Ons d'Or and was named League One Player of the Year in 2004 in his first season of top-tier football. Having survived a few lean seasons since, Didier Drogba is starting to regain the form that saw him dominate France's League One. And with his country behind him, there's no doubt there'll be a lot of nervous defenders come the 2010 FIFA World Cup. <laughs>